Hey you guys, what's good? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hey, my name is Chanel. So happy to have you here today on my reaction and commentary channel. Today we're gonna watch a movie together because we're totally friends and then we're gonna analyze it. This is my favorite way to watch a movie. So I'm so happy to have you here with me watching the movies, looking out for filmmaker elements, script choices, cinematography choices. Love a good soundtrack. After my watch, stick around for my thoughts and I will always, always, always go to the IMDb site for the movie and we'll review some trivia together where I kind of answer some questions that popped up during the watch. So let me know if you stick around for that too. Let me know down below. Do you like the trivia section? Are you a, are you a trivia section ho? I'm a ho for trivia. Anyway, today's movie came up a bunch. It's been on my list for years. Yes, today's movie is Fargo from 1996. Guys, I pulled this one and another Coen Brothers movie on my Patreon, and I'm so excited that this one won because I really, well, honestly, Frances McDormand might be in all of them. <laughs> but I really wanted to see this movie and I really want to see Frances McDormand just absolutely kill it. God, I love her so much. She's the freaking best. So yes, Fargo. I think it's in the um, zeitgeist enough for me to know Midwest, right? But aren't most Coen Brothers films? No, they're not all Midwest. Okay, well, I know Frances McDormand's gonna have a crazy Midwestern accent and I'm so excited because I love accents. And I feel like if I know anything, is she a cop? She Is she law enforcement somewhere? And I think she's gonna have to investigate, I hope a murder, I think. I don't watch trailers. I don't look up the synopsis. I'm actively avoiding it, actually. I'm excited for cold weather. I'm excited for my girl, Frances. And I think, without further ado, let's get right into today's watch, which is Fargo from 1996. I don't know if I believe it because I know the Coens can be goofy so I'm like is this comedy or is this gonna be drama and I feel like a great image to superimpose our titles on because snow right so it's like a washed out sky feels epic Fargo. <laughs> I'm uh, Jerry Lundegaard. You're Jerry Lundegaard? Yeah. Shep Proudfoot said. Shep said you'd be here at 7.30. What gives, man? He's peed three times already. Oh, we all set on this thing then? Sure, Jerry, we're all set. Why wouldn't we be? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm sure you are. Sure, Jerry. <laughs> I love you, Shemmy. <laughs> I will say this, though. What Shep told us didn't make a whole lot of sense. Oh, no, it's real sound. It's all worked out. You want your own wife kidnapped? Yeah. You... That is what he's here for? He's real well off. So why don't you just ask him for the money? Or your fucking wife, you know. Or your fucking wife, Jerry. Well, it's all part of this... Excellent dialogue. Love it. They don't know I need it. Oh, f it. Let's take a look at that Sierra. Great. Hon? Hi, hon. Welcome back. How is Fargo? Oh my god, her hair. I'm not okay. It's okay, McDonald's. What do you think they do there? They don't drink milkshakes, I assure you. That's okay, Dad. That's exactly what I'm doing at McDonald's. I'm ordering an M&M McFlurry and playing at the play place. I'm asking you here, Wade. This could work out real good for me and Gene and Scotty. Gene and Scotty never have to worry. Rude ass. I love those like very extreme wide shots to like show the isolation of this place, the desolate, how desolate. We stop at pancakes, as. What are you nuts? We have pancakes for breakfast. <laughs> Gotta go to a place. What are you nuts? I want to use that in my everyday life, unironically. What are you nuts? I'm hungry now, you know. Yeah, yeah, Jesus. I'm saying we can stop, get pancakes, and then we'll get laid, all right? Oh shit, he wasn't kidding. He knew exactly where they could get laid. <laughs> and then the cuts to this. 
too good. I was wondering, see, I gotta get in touch with him. See this deal I needed him for? I may not need it anymore. Something's happening, see? Call him up. Thought maybe you'd know an alternate number or what have you. Nope. Oh no. He's like, uh, excuse me, I need to cancel. Love this conflict. Love it. He might not need it, and now it's already in motion. Movies are conflict. Did you guys, have you guys heard that? Screenplays are conflict? Driving, just trying to chat. You can't say one fucking thing just in the way of conversation. Buscemi is such a good bullshitter, right? He can chat forever. Two could play at that game, smart guy. We'll just see how you like it. This is me talking to my family. I'm just filling silence, and they're like, shut up. <laughs> It's pretty darn busy here, but that's the way we like it. Well, that's for sure. Now, I just need on these last... Uh, these oh, the slats are so Cohen Brothers. I don't have them in front of me. Why don't I just fax you over a copy? No, no problem. Okay, real good then. How to make holodazzle eggs ourselves at home. Now, Katie, I gotta admit, what? I was a little bit surprised when I first picked this up. Oh, God. I need, I'm like, is this gonna be successful or what? No, no, I guarantee this. No. <laughs> I'm like expecting her to get away. Oh my god, does she get away? She must. Yes, I wanted that for her. These guys are inept. I wasn't expecting that. <gasps> okay, all right. I thought she'd like crack her head open and die or something. Stop it. She's alive. Right? Guys. All right, Stan. Oh my God. Is this going to be a death movie? <gasps> all right, it's a pretty... What uh... kind of finder's fee are you looking for? The only thing we don't know is your fee. My fee? Finder's fees, what, 10%? Heck, that's not gonna do it for me. I need the principal. Jeez, what the heck are you- We're not a bank, Jerry. You know, bro. I assume if you're not interested, you won't mind if we move on it. <gasps> no. Jerry's got a, uh, Jerry's gonna have to learn how to not be such a pushover. I just want Frances McDormand on my screen. When is she coming? Hopefully by minute 30. Hun? Oh, God. <laughs> Wait, it's Jerry. I don't know what to do. It's Jean. I don't know what to do. It's my wife. Oh, is he rehearsing? <gasps> Wait, I, it's Jerry. I... I love a rehearsal. Yes, get it right. <laughs> get your lines it's right. Oh, <laughs> it's terrible. Have you done this? I've done this a lot. Not for a show, for my real life. <laughs> I rehearse phone calls because I hate phone calls. Wait, it's Jean. <laughs> oh, the Paul Bunyan statue. Scary. Oh, God. She's alive. I'm scared. To the trunk, you know? Jeez, that's more than I've heard you say all week. Should have kept her in the trunk. All right, it's just a tag. <gasps> Is this gonna be Francis in the car? All right, just just keep it still back there, lady. Or else we're gonna have to, you know, to shoot you. These idiots. So maybe the best thing to do would be to take care of that right here in Brainerd. What's this, sir? My license and registration. And a crisp fifty. I was just thinking we could take care of it right here, in Brainerd. If this cop lets him go, I swear to God. Oh, I recognize him. No. No. I did Oh my God. I didn't see any other way out, but I was really not expecting that. Oh, wow. They had no other choice. He wasn't going to let him go. Oh God, hurry up. Go, 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 go. <laughs> I love this act too. There's so many like fun obstacles, like, oh my God, and it's tense. <laughs> how, how? 
How is this fine? Oh god, oh god, oh god, he's gonna kill the others. <laughs> I was waiting for this guy to snap. Play dead, you guys. No, just leave her there. Just leave her there. God damn. I'm like, I trust them. Leave them alone. <laughs> Somebody likes geese. Hi, it's March. Strong Midwestern name, Marge. I'll fix you some eggs. Norm. Ah, Norm. Thought you might need a little warm up. Thanks a bunch. So, what's the deal now? Carrie says triple homicide? Yeah, it looks pretty bad. Two of them are over here. That accent is just so happy sounding. Just, what do we got here? Triple homicide? <laughs> the juxtaposition of the horror mixed with like this happy woman and she's pregnant it's too good here's the second one i get that's a defensive wound oh yeah so we got a trooper pull someone over we got a shooting these folks drive by there's a high speed pursuit ends here and then this execution type deal she nails it no i just think i'm gonna barf Jeez. <laughs> well that passed yeah i love her uh -huh. So, I got the state looking for a Sierra with a tag starting DLR. They don't got no match yet. I'm not sure that I agree with you 100% on your police work there, Lil. I think that vehicle there probably had dealer plates. DLR? <laughs> oh. oh, God. Oh. Comedy is coming from the performances here, but the comedy is also coming from the edits. They're doing really funny cutting. Not horse trading here, Wade. Yeah. We gotta just bite the bullet on this thing. Yeah. It's his daughter, and he's trying to undercut. Dead. We gotta play ball with these guys. Yes, yeah, Stan Grossman, he'll tell you the same thing. Yeah, but did. <laughs> We're gonna get mom back for you, but we gotta play ball, you know? I cannot wait to see how Marge is gonna solve this. My girl. <laughs> Who's the accordion king? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I'm putting myself in her shoes. I'm like, there's no shot. I couldn't run anywhere. <laughs> it's not funny, Steve Buscemi. Lunch time in I love this woman. Oh, Janie, it's lunch time. <laughs> I brought you some lunch, Margie. What are those? Oh my God, yeah. her husband. Oh, thanks, Mom. Dead. Thanks they have lunch. every meal together. Oh, yeah, looks pretty good. Oh, night crawlers. They're good, Norm, but you're better than them. You think so? You got Arby's all over me. A proper pronoun like Arby's, so much funnier than just burgers or whatever. Blue Ox, that's that trucker's joint out there on I-35. Yeah. Where they get laid. Said these two had company. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Her face. But I went to high school in White Bear Lake. Go Bears. Okay. Go Bears. Well, the little guy, he was kind of funny looking. In what way? I don't know, just funny looking. Can you be any more specific? She's like, have you, seen, have you heard of Steve Buscemi? Yeah, is that useful to you? Oh, you betcha, yeah. 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 <laughs> the repetitions, too, of the yeah. Damn it, nothing to do. This poor woman. Oh, she's, I was about to say, she's cold. But she's by the oven. Hmm. Yeah, is this Marge? This is Mike Yanagita. You know, Mike Yanagita, remember me? Mike Yanagita? Yeah. Doesn't ring a bell. Oh, heck. 
<laughs> it's been such a long time, Mike. <laughs> These are such down-home happy people. They're, like, investigating a triple homicide, and he organized his wife's kidnapping. Oh, that's flashbacks to an office setting. She's all right, but there's three people up in Brainerd who aren't so okay, I tell you that. What the heck are you talking about? Let's just finish this deal up here. Blood has been shed, Jerry. Oh, God, he's going to find three out now. in Brainerd. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Love it. Pile on. Pile on him. Jerry's getting in some hot water. Oh, this looks so good. <laughs> I love chicken. Oh, and Swedish meatballs. Are they in Ikea? No. They're just in a cafeteria of sorts. I love how much she eats. It's too good. What you got there? Oh, the numbers you asked for. They eat every meal. I just love it. Would you happen to know a good place for lunch in the downtown area? For lunch? The Radisson. Dead. Oh, yeah? Is it reasonable? She is the queen of the one-sided phone call. I just totally believed that someone else was on the other end. She's a genius. I'm sure someone off camera is feeding her the other person. Or maybe not. Maybe she's just making it up. These are one take shots too, because once you mess up the snow with those tracks, there's no doing that again, right? We have to we have to look up the snow. Oh, good idea. Yeah, I just came in. I decided not to park here, so. But, uh, well, I, I'm sorry, sir. Yeah, I decided not to. Uh, I. Uh, well, I'm sorry, sir. We still got to charge you the four dollars. <laughs> I just pulled in here. I feel like they cast people with interesting teeth and or smiles. Four dollars, you pathetic piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, every little bit player in this movie has had the wildest smile. Now, I saw some rough stuff on your priors, but nothing in the nature of a homicide. I know you don't want to be an accessory to something like that. So, you think you might remember who those folks were who called you? Mike? March? Jeez! <laughs> oh, Is that who called her? Also, she fixed her hair. Does she love him? I'm expecting. Oh, I see that. that. That's great. Oh, what can I get you? Oh, just a Diet Coke, please. Great. She's like, a Salisbury steak, a Diet Coke, some fries. You mind if I sit over here? Uh, I was married to Linda Cooksey. No, why don't you sit over there? I prefer that. Mike, get back over there. This behavior. I'm sorry. It's, uh, you know. She's so I nervous. And then, <laughs> I've been so lonely. Oh, Mike. Find that work interesting, do you? What are you talking about? All right. Come on. <laughs> I'm hearing bells. Come on. <laughs> Find that work interesting? <laughs> Cut to. <laughs> Shit, what the hell are you doing? I'm banging that girl. Oh, the f got it. Get out. <sighs> oh. oh. It's getting bad. It's getting bad for Jerry. You. Who the f are you? Is this a f joke here? In the jaw. <sighs> Little elevated heart rate action right there. <laughs> love it. Love it. We love it. May I have your ticket, please? Over the fucking gate! Everything with a smile. Twice! Oh, okay. Is everything okay? Yeah. Everything's great, son. Mr. Mora? Yep. Officer Olsen. It yep. looks f***ing cult. <laughs> and he says, but I'm going crazy out there at the lake. And I says, yeah, but this ain't that kind of place. Uh-huh. He says, yeah, that guy's dead, and I don't mean of old age. And then he says, geez, I'm going crazy out there at the lake. 
<laughs> White bear leg? Yeah, well, in Eklund and Sweden, they're closer to move. Everything is like a long-winded conversation. I called it in. End of story. Well, what does this guy look like, anyway? <laughs> oh, he's a little guy, kind of funny looking. Funny looking. Well, thanks a bunch, Mr. Mora. You're right. It's probably nothing. That was a long take. No cuts. Didn't show us the other guy's face, not once. No reaction shot from the other guy. I have no idea how he's chilling with that injury. Jesus Christ. What is it? Oh, f I'm not finding that case till summer. No shot. Oh, okay. Well, if that stays. Well, it's nothing specific he said. It just seemed like it all hit him really hard. His wife, Diane. His wife? Linda. Who? Linda Coxie. He was bothering Linda for about over a good year. Really pestering her. Wouldn't leave her alone. <gasps> Mike's a liar. Poor Mikey. She's at Hardy's now. Dead, babe. Marge for president. Oh, how I'm yawning. Sorry to bother you again. Can I come in? Yeah, no, I'm kind of, I'm uh, kind of busy here. I understand. I'll keep it real short then. Do you mind if I sit down? Carrying a bit of a load here. Catchphrase. The car's not from our lot, ma'am. You have no call to get snippy with me. I'm just doing my job here. I'm. Mm hmm. Okay, I'll do a damn luck count. Sir, right now? Yeah, right now. You snippy for having nothing to hide. <sighs> oh, for Pete's sake. Oh, he's peacing. Look, sir, I can explain this. Been waiting for him to get back. Her front of her. Oh my God, is she dead? Uh, she started shrieking, you know. Jeez, well, I got the money. All of it. That's 40 for you, 40 for me. And you only ruined your whole life for it. And your face. I'm taking that fucking car. That fucking is mine. You know, I've been listening to your fucking bullshit all week. Are we square? He's gonna snap on him. Oh, ah! oh thank God we gotta cut away. Whew. She was kidnapped last Wednesday. <sighs> Oh, I'm almost back. I'm taking a drive around Moose Lake. There's a car! There's a car! I just love that she, like, figures it out and finds everything in just the calmest, slowest, slow and steady wins the race way. You know, so naive, so funny. What do I hear? <laughs> oh my god, that's a sight. Oh god, I would wait for backup. Hey, I'm not oh, wait. <laughs> Can't hear. Is she gonna get him? Good. Flesh wound. That's what we like to see. Mr. Quiet is captured. So that was Mrs. Lundegaard on the floor in there. And I guess that was your accomplice and the wood chipper. And those three people in Brainerd. And for what? For a little bit of money. Mr. Paul Bunyan again. And here you are. And it's a beautiful day. <laughs> it's a beautiful day. <laughs> She's so positive, so sunny. She does a great optimist. She does a great pessimist. Francis can do no wrong. No, wait. No. Didn't get away with it. cuts man this movie was made in the edit for sure i mean most are i'm just very impressed by this comedy editing 
three cent stamp. You're Mallard? Yeah. <gasps> oh, that's terrific. It's just a three cent. Oh, he likes it's the terrific. Mallards. People don't much use the three cent. Oh, for peace, of course they do. <laughs> when they're stuck with a bunch of the old ones. Yeah. Oh. I love you, Margie. I love you, Norm. I love them. Adorable. Two more months. Hilarious. <laughs> Too good. Okay, friends. Fargo from the year 1996. I have now seen it. What a hoot and a holler. That was so fun. I just love that. It was understated. The comedy was super understated. This was very quiet, funny. I would venture to say maybe one of their first films. I know that Blood Simple was first, but this felt low budget and just a real small story. I mean, just like a little down home woman who takes her time to figure out this murder. And I really, I thought this movie was gonna be, oh my gosh, I thought this movie was gonna be her figuring out a murder and we would be kind of in the dark with her. But I just loved how it was, we knew everything. And it was just a matter of when was Margie going to catch up with them, get, catch up with, you know, Jerry and the plot. So I just thought that that was the f just so funny. What did I write? I wrote great screenplay, super funny, great comedy editing. Every time they wanted to punctuate a joke, there would be a quick cut from something like absolutely shocking to something totally quiet. A lot of comedy in the comparisons between horror, like the horror of a murder and just everything with a smile. And I really do think that the Coens probably took pains to cast people with just award-winning smiles. Oh, and I wrote great characters. Every one of these characters was just so endearing, so fun. Yeah, I don't have much to say except that it was a very successful screenplay, very successful comedy-wise. I will be so interested to research because I have I have questions about the snow. I have questions about the budget. Okay, let's do some trivia. The snow plow that drives past the motel at the end of the film was not part of the script. Oh, I remember the plow. Clean. It was the cleanup in Act 3. Signs in the area warned motorists not to drive through due to filming, but a state employee ignored them. Too good. It per worked perfectly. Oh, they decided Norm... The backstory was between Francis and John Carroll Lynch. They decided Norm and Marge met while working at the police force, and when they were married, they had to choose which one had to quit. Since Marge was a better officer, Norm quit and took up painting. Oh. Carl's show, Walter, was written specifically for Steve Buscemi. He's the man. He's so good. Actors used a book called How to Talk Minnesotan to help with their accents. Love. William H. Macy begged directors for the role of Jerry. He did two readings for the part and became convinced he was the best man for the role. When the Coens didn't get back to him, he flew to New York and he said, I'm very, very worried you're going to screw up this movie by giving the role to somebody else. It's my role. I'll shoot your dogs if you don't give it to me. He was joking, of course. Wow, William H. Macy said that he did hardly any ad-libbing. Most of his character's stuttering mannerisms were written in the script exactly the way he does them in the film. Great script. Huh. Frances McDormand referred to her accent as Minnesota nice. Great. It was so nice. She was so nice. Oh my god, I did know this, sis. Peter Stormare, the guy who played the accomplice, has 18 lines of dialogue in the entire movie and never says more than a complete sentence at one time. And Buscemi is talking circles around him. It's too funny. The Coen brothers decided to call it Fargo, which is in North Dakota, because they liked the sound of it for a title better than Brainerd, which was not cool enough. Fargo is where Jerry Lindergaard meets the two hoods he tries, he hires to kidnap his wife. Okay, so Fargo's just where they meet in the beginning, and we saw that in the cards. Aw, Gene Siskel and Roger Ebert said with a smile, this is why we love movies. They named it the best film of 1996. Filming took place in winter 1995 when the region was experiencing its second warmest winter in a hundred years. Filming over outdoor scenes had to be moved all over Minnesota, North Dakota, and Canada. And much of the snow was artificial. Oh, we have our answer. I wanted to know that. Oh, artificial. I'm heartbroken. I'm absolutely heartbroken. I thought for sure it was real. It seemed real. Whoa. Frances McDormand wore a pregnancy pillow filled with bird seed. Ugh, that's heavy. I would go for a lighter one and just fake it. <laughs> Three weeks into shooting, Joel and Ethan Cohen revealed to their casting crew that this was not in fact based on a true story. I could have figured that. <laughs> 
Oh my god, Frances McDormand accidentally left her pregnancy suit in the trailer one night. The silicone breasts in the suit froze and one of them exploded the next day on set. Dead. I did want to know why the Mike subplot. The Coens wrote the scene at the restaurant with Mike to develop Marge's character outside of the case or her marriage. So we got to see a little piece of Marge. This was like a slice of life cross-cutting between murder, heist movie. It was like, and in those like heightened places, the slice of lifeness just provides the, the, ex the most excellent comparisons and juxtapositions. And that's where the comedy was for me. The comedy was in heist lunch with her husband, killing Arby's, like another murder. Let's talk about stamps, like too good. It's a, it's a fine structure. Copy it if you've got an idea. Copy the structure. This is a good structure. None of the movie scenes, either exterior or interior, were actually filmed in Fargo. The bar exterior shown at the beginning of the movie is located in Northwest Minneapolis. Oh, oh my gosh, I really wanted to know about the screen eating. Oh, William H. Macy was nominated for an Oscar for this. Three consecutive films made by the Coen brothers feature the character named Gunderson, possibly in reference to Rebel Without a Cause. Cool. Yeah, although Frances McDormand's character is the film's central role, she does not appear on screen until over 33 minutes or one third into the film. 21 fascinating facts about the Coen brothers, Fargo. Fargo had a very modest budget of only $7 million, but ended up taking in 60 million at the box office. 7 million is a very low budget. Fargo was second banana at the Academy Awards. Took home two Oscars, one for Best Original Screenplay and another to Frances McDormand for her portrayal of Marge Gunderson, but lost the big awards. They went through extensive training to get their accents right. Yeah, they used the Minnesota nice accent. The musicality of the Minnesota nice accent comes from a place of wanting people to agree with each other and get along. This homey sensibility contrasted with the ugly crimes committed throughout the movie is of course one of the major reasons why the dark comedy is such an enduring classic. Yup. It was entirely in playing with opposites. That was where all the comedy was for me. And it works. It works. So funny. Oh, I didn't know this. This is cool. Because the Coens found having their names appear on screen as directors, writers, producers, and editors a bit tacky, they credit their editing work to the fictional Roderick James, who's listed on all of their films outside of Raising Arizona and Miller's Crossing. So they edit their own films too. I want Frances McDormand to talk about all the screen eating. I'm sure she's a real pro and I'm sure she just got super hungry and went for it because she is not spitting. Usually when they cut away, actors will use a spit bucket so they can do more takes. Ugh, okay. Well, I can't get any information on um, Marge's eating in this movie. I just wanted to know if Frances McDormand was like, I was sick to my stomach and Joel said, keep eating or something, but okay. Yeah. So Fargo from 1996, that was absolutely amazing. Loved it. So happy to have caught that movie for the channel. Definitely going to do more Coen Brothers on the channel. So look out for that. Let me know your experience with Fargo. Did you see it for the first time in 1996? Did you see it in theaters? Did you catch it at home? What did you think? Did you maybe not get it at first and then get it later? Seems like this one was well received for the year and it was double Oscar nominated. So yeah, let me know what you think of Fargo. Of course, Patreon information in the description box below if you want more from me. Other ways to support the channel in the description box below. And of course, as always, on that note, I'm gonna go eat dinner. And um, I think in honor of Margie, it's going to be chicken. 